Chomp Man, Games Without Code. Created for developers of all levels and based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. All the game assets, textures, UI, and effects were created from scratch and we're giving them to you for free. So if you wish to follow along step by step, you can download the Chopman project files from the links in the description or from the Unity Asset Store. In this video, we'll not only show you how to set up the enemy characters, but also how to create a dynamic floating effect and create a state machine that can allow our enemies to dynamically change colors all based on one single material. You'll find the enemy characters under mesh, character, and it is the ghost mesh. And what we're going to do is we're going to just drag this into the scene. And just like the our chomp character, a ghost mesh just has a, a blend shape as well. Essentially just kind of moves the sheet a little bit as it moves along. So the first thing that we can do is set up our FSM similar to the way we set it up to the blinking FSM that we have on our chomp character. First, let's move our camera so that our character is in our game view. So within this character, we have a few attributes and one of those is our material. One of the things that we're going to do to use this character in several ways is uh, if we go into our textures and we go under our character and let's lock this in real quick so we can see under our missions, we have several different colors. So if we go and we take this orange into a mission we can now have that orange ghost. So we have these for each of our colors as well as our color when the power pellet is activated. We'll set that up in a couple minutes, but for now, let's just set up the blend shape for this character. We wanna first tag our enemy character. So for that, we don't really have a tag for enemy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a tag. When you hit add tags, it'll bring the uh, tags and layer addition into the inspector. We can see all the layers that we have in our scene as well as the tags as well. To add a tag, just click this plus button and it'll say add a tag and you go with the tag name. We're gonna go with this tag and we're just gonna tag this enemy. So once we do that, we can see that it doesn't translate over. If we click hit our drop down, we can see now that we have that enemy tag uh, within our tags folder. Now for this one, we won't be using the animator as well, so we can remove that animator since so we really won't be using that within this project. And let's go, let's go to our prefabs. And let's bring in our chomp character. So for this, what we're gonna do is essentially just grab that prefab from our blink instead of having to create it over and just put it back to our ghost. With our chomp character selected, we're just gonna go in that FSM, we're just gonna say a copy component. Let's disable that so we can see our ghost. We're gonna go here, we're gonna right click anywhere inside of the spectre and we're gonna say paste as new component. So we're just gonna go and we're gonna grab that blink and we're just gonna go and we're gonna put wrinkles. Let's just delete this prefab since we don't really need that at the moment. If we go into a playmaker window, we can see now that we have a few warning signs in here. However, since our object that has a skin mesh render, what we can do for this one is we can just say use owner. And so for that, it will actually use that owner instead of defining that mesh. So let's go to use owner as well. So we can see we got rid of those uh, warnings. And since we're doing that blink by our index and we can see if we go under our skin render, we essentially only have one. So that index of zero still stands. So for these events, let's change this. Let's change this to we can say a name like wrinkling or waving. And it's just, we were just trying to kind of distinct, distinguish this from our blink. This is a bit different than our blink. We can essentially have this to where it is going back and forth between our wrinkles. Since this is kind of more so defining the movement in our character, just having those sheets kind of move as that effect. So we can essentially just really play with this effect. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our two subtractions from this one. We really, really kind of want the speed to be uh, fairly even between when that's happening. And let's go over into our blink speed and we can kind of adjust this as well. We want this to be a little bit slower, let's go about 20. Uh, and then we can test this out and see what kind of effect what we get. So 
go over here and play with our numbers a little bit. Now, one of the things we don't want it to do is we, we're kind of looking for not really a pause between when it happens. We kind of want these to ping back and forth and we don't really want there to be a wait time in between either and we want that speed to fairly slower. We want it to be more of like a hovering type of breathing effect. So if we hit play. You can now see we get like more of a kind of, kind of gives us kind of the illusion of that effect as a little bit of wind kind of is going beneath those sheets, moving those sheets a little bit as well. This is kind of really good effect that we're, you know, essentially getting what we're looking for without really having to create anything new. It's kind of using that FSM that we already previously created just for that. So with that being done, we're going to go and let's minimize really need that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go under add component and we want to add a nav mess agent. So let's remove that height. Let's make that a little bit shorter and we're going to go to our base offset. We're going to change that base offset. Uh, to about zero up to around that uh, and we're going to uh, adjust that radius right about there so we can kind of encompass that encompass that as well as uh, a bit of the sheet as well now uh, for quality we just leave that on the default uh, so we're just going to leave all these default settings at the moment we kind of adjust those as needed the next thing that we have is we're going to add a rigid body component as well since we're going to need this to interact with triggers and different things like that. So we're going to add a rigid body component. We're going to go to is kinematic because we, we don't really want that to be affected by different objects in our scene. Under constant, we're going to ensure that we freeze our Z position as well. Once we have that created, we're going to create one more collider. So it's going to go that we're going to go to physics so we can just type capsule and we're going to create a capsule collider and we're just going to adjust this accordingly. And so for this one, we're going to say is trigger. We want that to use as a trigger as well. So this is an initial setup uh, for our ghost. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this ghost into character prefabs. And then we're going to we're going to duplicate that and make a prefab for each one of our main ghost as well. So we're going to select this. So with this one selected, let's go and we're going to drag this into our scene and let's move this on the side of our base ghost. So we're going to go back, have this orange selected. Now, again, using a version of Unity 2019 one point above, you would open the, the prefab that's selected. We're going to go into our playmaker. So in for our playmaker, we're going to type get material. So we want to get this material and we want to get the material from the owner of this and in our materials we're going to create a new variable so let's call this orange say matte um, to let us know uh, that is uh, for our material the next thing we want to do is we want to set the texture so we're going to say set material texture so for this material, we want the material that it uses to be the ghost orange material. And so what this will do is essentially this will create an instance of our material. So we don't have to continue kind of creating different types of material in our project file. Initially, once we go to a uh, set material it's on your main texture. So if we go into our specter and we look, 
we can see that the the name of our material looks like is albedo which doesn't essentially match with the kind of name of the material so so to find those names what we're going to do is we're going to right click up here and we're going to go to debug so within our debug we can now see like within the materials we have a different type of name so we want to go to save properties and we want to go under texture and under texture we see we have a lot of these different things and we can now see the actual names that we need to have for our names and text that we need to use so since we want to change our emission map we can see that our emission map is called emission underscore emission map uh, all one word um, with camel casing so we're going to type that within the name textures so once we have that and we can go back and we go back to our normal view uh, let's click this emission right here just so we can see Let's lock this in, make sure we don't actually select something else. And let's go to our orange emission and we're going to bring that right there. So now that we see our logic that we have, we have it to, as soon as it starts, it's going to get that material and then make an instance of that, calling that ghost orange mat. Then it's going to set the emission to orange. So let's go into Unity. Um, now let's click play. And we can now see when the game starts that we now have our orange ghost material. And you can see that that material that it's using is the ghost material and it's an, now an instance of that material. So now that we have our original uh, as well as an instance of that material. So let's go back into our prefabs and let's grab this guy and let's duplicate this three times. We're gonna make a red ghost we're going to make a pink ghost and a light blue ghost as well. At this point, we're just going to be renaming our material and re-putting our emissions in there. So we're going to start with that light blue. Click that so we can go to our texture. I'm going to go here a variable so there really isn't any confusion now selecting our uh, paint ghost prefab So now that we have everything renamed, let's bring all these guys kind of into our scene. And we can now see that we have all the different ghosts can see that we have the different instances of our materials on here have all of those we have all of our blend shapes kind of working uh, as well as our base ghost just in case we want to whatever we want to do with that one we can do that as well so it's just a quick way of just kind of setting up all the ghosts kind of all your materials at once instead of having to instead of having to go in duplicate and having essentially a different material for each ghost that we have in here this is a really quick quick and easy way of kind of doing that uh, with one material, just using material instances. That completes our enemy setup. But be sure to subscribe and join us in the next video where we'll start creating our actual gameplay.